What's happening, fly junkies? This crack coming at you. In addition, I crack a sauce. Hey, we're talking about Parma Park, baby. Oh, your gateway to the sky. You know what I'm saying? We got Eagle Instructor, Jedi Pilot, Mitch Riley. It is an honor and a pleasure to have him explaining things today. You know what I'm saying? No one explains things better than this guy. If you fledglings want to maximize your airtime, you have to get comfortable landing at Parma Park. It's the only way to do it. It's the, it's the gateway to our most reliable, consistent spots like Skyport, Eliminator, EJ Bowl. I like the way he explains lower Parma at the end of this video. You know, if uppers intimidates you, if you had a rough experience there, just go to lower. It's huge, lots of sink. Put it right in there, you know what I'm saying? No obstructions. Easy peasy, baby. Let's land at Parma. It's all good. Let's maximize our air time, you know what I'm saying? Mitch Riley, everybody. Mitch Riley, here we go. To the edges of the LZ. As you see that fence line right there? Yeah. And can you see there's fence posts? even when the wooden fence ends. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of one edge of the LZ there. That bush line in the back right there, right? There's the, there's the kind of bush line, and then there's the power lines, and the road under the power lines right there, and yep. then there's the palm trees. So that bush line on the back okay. is, is a, a, a boundary. And then this ridge line right here where it drops down into the goalie. Okay. The goalie line is this edge. On this side of things, we want to treat this high line between the wind indicator tree. You see the streamer right there? Oh, yeah. That's our wind indicator tree. Between the wind indicator tree and that tree right there, this high line is the end of the LZ here. Okay. After the high line, it drops down enough that your glide ratio might overfly that field down there, you know? Uh, okay. So yeah, we yeah. might as well just treat this high line right here as the end. Um, our typical wind directions are coming off the ocean, so somewhere in here, right? That's about straight south, that's about straight west, that's east. So sometimes it'll be a little southeast, more often it'll be south or some sort of southwest. Okay. So straight south. Kind of like what we have now is, let's say, southwest. Um, We have the palm trees over there. See the palm trees? Mm -hmm. um, kind of this row of palm trees and the eucalyptus tree. Oh yeah. So what we usually want to do is do figure eights, right, uh, on that side of the LZ, kind of above that bush line right there on that side. Okay. Just like we were doing at the train hill yesterday, just like you've probably done a ton, we do figure eights on the downwind side of the LZ, right? Yeah. And what we really don't want to do is we don't want to creep into the LZ and use up the LZ with our approach pattern. Yeah. Right? So we really want to make sure we're rounding out those figure eights so that we're not creeping the LZ. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if there's a fair amount of wind, our heading will be facing into the wind a lot, right? But the laser pointer at the ground will be making a figure eight. Yeah. Right? The yep. less wind there is, the more our heading will actually have to come around and make the figure eight. Makes sense, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, kind so of burn we, off altitude. Exactly. More, so you get yeah. yeah. And then we're looking for our spot, just like always, we're looking for our spot when we're in that figure eight pattern, not creeping into the LZ, and we're deciding when it's time to fly mm -hmm. out and land right on our spot. Yeah. And the spot we want to use is kind of that low area right here. You kind of see just after these bushes, there's a low area right there, and it kind of extends right down and through here. Mm hmm yeah it's almost like a little ridge or like or walkway or something yeah yeah there's a path almost going right through it and you'll see a path from the air so we want to use that low area as our spot because it gives us plenty of overshooting room and just like a downhill will counteract our glide and will fly over it um an uphill will act an uphill landing zone will act like a bigger landing zone than it actually is right yeah. because our glide ratio is interacting with it that's right that's right Cool. So, there's a, there's a few lanes we might use for the different wind directions, right? We always like to do our figure eight patterns in that same place there. I'll talk about that in a second. But we may, if it's kind of southeast, right, if it's coming through this way, we may come down through this lane right here. Okay. And then we'd use a spot probably like right where those flowers start there, Yeah. right? If it's coming straight down the long way of the LZ, we might use this lane right between the two bushes in the middle. Mm -hmm. Right, and once again, it's kind of right where these flowers start are, are pretty thick right here. Yeah, would be our spot. And if it's some sort of southwest, maybe that lane 
or maybe this lane right here, right? The more west, it's west. It gets. Yeah, you might be coming straight in like this. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. The reason we don't want to, I'll look at bird thing. The reason we don't want to hang out and do our approach in the gully over there is, well, there's two reasons. First of all, the thermals are releasing from the mountains, right? Mm -hmm. So they're drawing air in and that air is going to flow up the gullies, mm -hmm. right? It's accelerated air mass, so it has some suction to it. So kind of on that edge right there, we typically get some sink from that. Okay. And then we'll see from up there, but there's a valley system that comes up and over this hill right here, right? And as that valley air comes and rises, it cools as it's rising, right? And that high line, the point where it gets the most cool, is kind of like right over there. And then off of here, it's a cold air mass that's gonna descend through the warmer air mass over there, right? Yeah, yeah. So too far out that way, and we get kind of this sudden sink. Okay. And it, it can be unpredictable, and you don't wanna end up kind of on the other side of that hill. It's, it's doable to land there, but better to do your approach here. Kind of like back, you're saying, where those two houses are. Oh no, just, just like or over just the, side the side of this bridge. goalie, yeah. yeah gotcha. If we go, we don't want to go too far over the side of the, this okay. goalie. If it is the west situation, and we're coming in here, I still burn off my altitude there, and then I'm kind of coming down this tree line right here, right? Mm -hmm. High enough that at any point I can just come and put it in if I get some sink, you know? Yeah. So coming down this tree line right here, and most likely kind of coming right into here, but if all of a sudden I get sink, I can take that lane or I can take the lane up there. I just, I don't want to be that side of the tree line because then I'd have to come through trees and stuff if I got sink. Yeah. Makes, makes sense, sense, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, any questions on any of that? Um, I kind of want to know what's just over this ridge because I haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, we'll look at it in a second. And the really cool thing about this LZ is we have an alternate right down there. We oh, have an sweet. alternate. I've literally been kicking flowers and gone and landed in lower Parma. Okay. Right, so it's right down there. And if at any point on your final approach or dur during your setup, you're coming, you're, you're coming in and the wind's switchy, it's feeling weird, or yeah. you get popped and you're gonna overfly this high line, or your planning just wasn't right and you're gonna overfly this high line, no big deal. As soon as it looks like you might overfly this high line, just make a left turn and go down to Lower Parma, which we're about to look at. Okay, kind of just down over that ridge. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. And okay. um, well, it's, it's a great LZ. Um, obviously, we've got some bushes, we've got some trees, we've got some rocks in this LZ, right? Mm -hmm. No big deal. We know that if we flare really well, we can land on a rock, right? Yeah. We can land in a tree, we can land in a bush, right? It's not a big deal at all. It takes a little untangling, but landing in a tree or a bush is way better than doing some major move near the ground Last and move. hitting the, the grass hard, you know? Yeah. You don't want to hit the grass hard. If if we have a good flare into the tree or the bush or the rock, we're probably going to be just fine, but doing some major input near the ground is not the right call. Gotcha. Most likely, if you're looking towards open ground, you're not going to land in the tree or the bush or the rock, you know? So just don't look at the tree or the bush or the rock. <laughs> look towards open ground. Yeah. <laughs> look at the flowers. It probably won't even be an issue. Yeah. We'll talk about the flight plan a little bit down there, too. you have any questions about this upper section? Um... I think I'm good for now. So basically just hugs this fence and then kind of like where those power lines are, the, the trees, and then it comes back along this ridge, right? Yeah, and from the air, you'll see this wind indicator tree. It's like, the, it looks pretty round from the air and it has the white streamers on it. It's easy to see. Um, and then you'll see the couple bushes in the middle. You'll see that row of palm trees and that tall eucalyptus tree. And typically on that figure eight line, if I'm doing my last turn around the eucalyptus tree, like just under the top of it, okay. then probably on this next line, I'm kind of looking for my spot. But we know like we might get popped up by some lift there and have to put another figure eight in. We might have to be really patient if there's lift, or we might be a little higher than that and all of a sudden get some sink and have to bring it in a little sooner than that, you know? Yeah. It's it's really variable just like every lane. Okay, cool. Let's walk the lower. So here's Lower, Lower Parmas. Um, sweet field, huh? Yeah. Super nice. We have the windsock right very there. Very inviting. <laughs> yeah, very inviting. And on this one, I'll treat like all the way there on the, gr the, the, the drier, tall grass as part of the landing zone. Okay. Right? So um, 
it's a pretty big landing zone and because it slants uphill into our wind direction it acts like a much bigger landing zone than it looks mm -hmm. you know the key to landing on uphill landings still just land straight into the wind the key is to think about the speed at which your feet are coming into the ground right okay. it's the same with a flat landing sometimes we're landing in sync right and we're coming yeah. into the ground fast and then what do we do with our flare yeah you just hold it yeah, or, or if your feet are coming to the ground fast, fast your flare is fast, right? Yeah. So, so same with an uphill landing, your feet are probably coming to the ground faster than in the same air in a flat landing. Okay. So your flare is just faster. Makes so sense. just think about that speed at which your feet are coming to the ground and your flare kind of matches that. And uphill landings can work super nice. Okay. Um, you can see that we were way up there above those trees, right? So this is well below. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I could launch a glider and still land in the corner right here launch a glider up there. Mm -hmm. So you've got that option to come down here. You want to choose it early, but you've got an option to come down here. Okay. Um, and that's that hillside you're th you're saying, hey, I want to see what's going on down there. Oh yeah. And look, it's pretty landable. Yeah. Right? There's places to land there. And even if you end up in a small bush or something, you know, like we talked about, just have a really nice flare into it. Yeah. Hopefully your plans are right and you're nailing one of these, but if not, just, you know, own it well and have a really nice flare and you'll do fine. Okay. Pick a spot to make it. Exactly. Um, so probably, you know, if you have some altitude to burn off, you're probably doing your figure eights right above those tall bushes and then bring it in here. And your spot would probably be almost where this trail goes through, maybe just a touch below it. Okay. All right. Um, and guess what? There's hillsides that are landable in a few different places around, right? Mm -hmm. So if you find yourself somewhere weird, just have a nice landing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> just pick a well, nice pick a nice place and have a nice landing. Hopefully you do the flight plan to come right down here. Our flight plan we'll talk about from the roundhouse down right now. That's the roundhouse. You see with the, the roundhouse with the windows up there? Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's the roundhouse, and above the roundhouse we'll talk about up there, but from the roundhouse down we're going to be following that high ridge that comes down this way. Okay. It's still the high ground through that saddle right there, and we just follow that, and then we follow the high ground all the way around that leads us to Parma. Uh, I see. Right? Yeah, right and, up on Yeah, right. and the reason right, we follow the high ground the whole way is because we want to fly through as many thermals as possible. That will give us the most altitude, right? Mm -hmm. Even though the straight line, the more direct line, is from the roundhouse straight to us, that's not going to be the liftiest line and not going to get us here the highest. Yeah. So in general, with our mountain flight plans, we choose the lines that take us through the most thermal triggers and get us to our next thermal trigger the highest or to our LZ the highest, mm -hmm. and hopefully both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we also we have a bailout landing zone that we'll look at from up there right around that saddle you've got a landing zone on the other side that's really easy to get to called st mary's but we can look at it from above okay any questions at all uh no, so far i like i like how inviting this alternative landing zone is. yeah and feel really good about choosing this one you know yeah um like kind of it's nice to use that one as a primary because then you've got the second chance mm -hmm. and the hang gliders kind of use this as their primary and we kind of use that okay. and in the rare event that two two of us would be coming in at the same time it's different speed aircraft so it's kind of nice to have two different landing zones gotcha but it's so rarely an issue that if it feels weird there at all you know just probably make the call to come down here and have a nice landing down here yeah yeah all right sweet